Roll call, Director Crail. Here. Director Parrott. Here. Director Robinson. Here. And I'm Director Rowan, I'm here, and Director Hilby will join us. I'd like to welcome everybody wherever they may be. Uh, conflict of interest. I think even I escaped this time. Uh, communications and celebrations. Um, at the elementary level, we've got some celebrations going on. We have um, been making a lot of progress on our weekly progress monitoring for our literacy assessments. And um, so that, that's been really great to see. The kids are getting excited about that. Um, we were able to have a COVID aware fall festival where we celebrated, um, you know, some of the Halloween traditions and also some of the Day of the Dead traditions um, from all the different cultures in our in our school. Um, we we were able to continue with part of the. Typically, our kindergarten and first grade go to uh, Rotary Senior Living and they do like a little costume parade and they sing songs to them. Um, just, you know, with the kind of year that we've been having, uh, we decided that that probably wasn't the smartest choice. So we did a costume parade in our building, um, where different grade levels would come down at specific times. We would video record it. And then the residents at the senior home can, they were able to watch it, um, you know, while they ate or just during their free time. Um, so. I've heard that we, we had some pretty good reviews with that and they, they enjoyed that. The, the kids like going down the little runway that we made and played some Halloween music and or, uh, things like that. Um, currently we are preparing to go to virtual instruction, but for uh, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday of this week. So that'd be the 11th through the 13th, um, mainly due to our, our staff uh, absence rate. We have about 30% of our staff members that are, that were absent today. Um, we we're, you know, about 25% on Friday. It, it doesn't really seem to be slowing down right now. Um, seems to be a different variety of things are affecting our, our staff, not just COVID, but um, it, it's making it tough to get kids covered and have people be safe and, and all those things. So um, we made the decision to be, we'll be in school tomorrow on Tuesday, um, hopefully given that a little bit of time to where parents and families and things like that can make arrangements. And then um, Wednesday through Friday, we'll be learning virtually and there'll be some more information co coming out um, as we finalize and tweak some things from last time, things that maybe didn't go so well and how we can make it go, go smoother. So uh, that's about all I have. Are there any questions? You anticipate next week you'll be okay to go back or is it kind of a wait and see we'll have to wait and see well well our hope is we want the kids in school as much as possible we are our plan is to go back on monday really you can only go five days and then you have to be back so you'd have to be back on wednesday we will evaluate later in the week and see where we are with it we do know that monday we have a lot of people that come off quarantine um that will help us in the situation as long as the ones who are COVID positive are healthy enough to come back. You know, some people have been still showing, not showing symptoms, but have been weak after the 10 days. If the people we have that are that are coming uh, off quarantine that time are able to come back, we think we'll be okay, but we'll, we'll keep monitoring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> certainly been a strange year, right? Some of the stuff we're doing is amazing. Um, <clears throat> we are going to remain uh, in school in normal days at the, the middle school. Um, right now I have I know, just a couple of, of pairs out. I don't have any teachers out. Um, and so um, we're, we're in pretty good shape and plan to stay in, in school. Um, at traditional school, and hopefully we'll be able to do that. And if we need to go at some other time, we'll go.
go mm -hmm. virtual at some other time. We are trying to get ready for conferences. I know um, the other two buildings have them coming up this week. Ours are a week from now, but um, trying to get parent conferences set up using um, Google Meets or phones, um, going virtual with, with all of that, um, trying to figure out how to show parents report cards and uh, grade sheets and everything else has been quite a chore. Um, we did get <clears throat> um, Josh Shield worked very hard to get um, set up so that we could uh, parents could sign up for conferences uh, using an online program. And uh, my teachers over the next uh, well tomorrow two hour early out and Thursday will just be really working on trying to get ready for conferences. It's, it's a lot more prep than it is when we're actually having them live. And then I just put a list of the things there that will be showing at conference packets. Uh, we are also busy trying to make some decisions about things that we've traditionally done over the, in the late November and into December. Obviously with COVID, we're not getting to do everything. Um, the, this year was supposed to be Veterans Day. A high school was gonna have it and they're not having a Veterans Day program. Uh, they worked it out so you guys are going to do it next year again. Um, we're not going to have our holiday dinner like we normally have. Uh, one of the things that um, we are planning on doing is having our Christmas tree decorating contest again. And we're going to try to do a virtual talent show. Um, I kind of think it might even actually work out a little bit better because the kids can do things at home, video them, and then send them in to us. And then we're going to make a video, um, a movie out of it. and. Uh, show it on that last day before we get out. We are also gonna do something with our secret Santa like we've done over the last few years and try to give things, uh, get things out to kids that don't maybe have a great Christmas. Uh, we are adding a few more minutes to the end of the day uh, because we don't know, we're no longer using shields. We don't have to take them back to the, <clears throat> to have them go back to ET to clean them off at the end of the day. We're adding about seven minutes, which, um, it gives us about two more minutes per per period in the afternoon. Um, and uh, we think that'll help a little bit anyway. Started winter sports tonight, boys basketball started practicing. Wrestling goes next Monday and uh, girls basketball starts in the middle of December. We'll have our first trim trimester assembly on the 24th. That's the day we get out for Thanksgiving, fifth grade, fifth and sixth grade will do it together. And then the seventh grade and eighth grade will do it together. We had an intruder training today, and that's how we did it. And we just spread them out uh, three seats apart and a row apart, and it worked out pretty well. So we're going to have a, an assembly. And then uh, last Friday, our sixth graders and the seventh and eighth grade choir got to watch the matinee that the high school put on and enjoyed it very much. And I just want to thank Mrs. Muse for giving them the opportunity. So, any questions? Thank you. And we should Nate, note that Director Schulte has joined us. So um, the high school is also going to stay uh, in person classes. Um, we are allowing those families that need the high school students to babysit to have excused absences for those few days. So I've already received some parent phone calls and we understand the role that our students play in their family. So if the students are able to, you know, go to their classes virtually, they'll get to do that. If they're unable to, the teachers get that too. Hopefully, since it's only, hopefully only three days, you know, it won't be a huge um, gap. Um, good news in our end, we received a grant for $9,900. Um, it was from like a county thing, COVID, it was like COVID money. Um, but the idea was something that, that the school would need that was either COVID related or mental health related. Um, so I jumped on that with being able to get the classroom sound systems. I had been observing a classroom and noticed that it was hard to hear the teacher's voice through a mask. And, and I know that we have hearing impaired students, plus I don't pay attention if I can't hear the teacher very well. So um, we were able to 
uh, get the grant for 10 of those. And then it turned out that they actually are having a sale like in one week. So if I just wait to purchase them, we can get, well, I wrote the grant for nine, but we'll get 10 because they're going to have a sale. So the salesperson is going to let me know when that starts, which is like I said, in about a week. So that's pretty exciting. So all of our core classes will have a mic system to be able to use, and it syncs with the equipment that our hearing impaired students use too. So that'll be really great. Um, we started the fast bridge testing at the high school. Uh, we tested the ninth and 10th graders. It was kind of a rush deal. So you'll see like we had and numerous kids that didn't get tested because we had one week after we came back virtual, like the window was that week, get it done or you can't do it until winter. Um, so we did it. So kids that were gone, we couldn't catch them to have them retake it. Um, and then those that are virtual didn't take it. However, the results are kind of interesting. You'll notice that I was really impressed by um, the there's the ninth grade class has 54% of the students that took the test that are at, at reading at the college track level. So at, for their age, they're reading at a level that would be conducive to going to college. So that's pretty awesome. And then 10th grade has 34% of the students that are reading at that college level. So that's very impressive. Um, as far as the students that are at risk in reading, um, the next step is to like support the staff in all areas, not just the English classrooms on reading strategies. Because even like the social studies and science textbooks, they might be for a sophomore, but they're actually written at a 12th or plus grade level. So um, integrating those reading strategies into all the classes will be important. And then um, the high school also started the student assistance team. We've met twice now. We have an AEA rep, um, EL represent, re representation, special ed representation, and then Mr. Thacker, myself, and Mrs. Deal, and um, Mr. T. Slank. And we have a program now that pulls data from Infinite Campus that'll give us information about students. Um, like some that can fall under the radar are the ones that are very compliant but not doing so good in class because they're not naughty. They don't draw a ton of red flags, but this system will pick those kids up too. And then we can work on figuring out why they're at risk and intervening before it's too late. Um, so this is in compliance too with an MTS system and something that like our ESSA program would want us to meet. So um, we were hoping to pilot last spring, obviously didn't get to do that, but we're on the ground and running now. So any questions? And conferences tomorrow night. The sign ups on Facebook. If parents haven't done that yet. And our teachers are reaching out to a handful of families as well that are um, where we especially want to make sure that we get in contact with them. So thank you. I've told the principals they can leave. Two of them have stuff afterwards. So they want to unless you have a question. Okay. Next item on the agenda are public comment cards, which we have none. So item number seven, approval of the proposed agenda. So moved. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to <laughs> approve the agenda. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Item number eight, approval of routine business matters. So moved. Second. Ben moved and second to approve second. The routine business matters. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? At this point, we will adjourn the meeting of the old board. With the meeting of the old board adjourned, I will call to order the new board. Uh, all are present. And I will call for nominations for board president. 
Oh, John sorry. Rowan. Darren, can I make yours a second? Yes. I have one nomination for John. Do yes. I have any other nominations? That being said, can I have a vote? All in favor, say aye. 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 Turn it back over to John. I'll have to take the aye vote then, John. Positive response, obviously, but you're on this one now. Qualifies you. John, do you solemnly <laughs> swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States? states and the constitution of the state of iowa and that you'll faithfully and impartially to the best of your ability discharge the duties of board president for the eagle girl school district as now or hereafter required by law i will thank you so our next item is election of board vice presidents Nomination. Yes. I nominate Tracy. Second. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor of electing Tracy Crail as our board vice president signify by saying aye. Aye. Both. Okay. Tracy, if you would stay on that too. Do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Iowa, and that you will faithfully and impartially, to the best of your ability, discharge the duties of Vice President of the Board for the Eagle Grove School District as now or hereafter required by law? I will. Thank you. <clears throat> The next item is to adopt written rules and procedures to follow while conducting the meetings. In the past, we've used Robert's rules of order. I'll move that we continue to do the same. Second. Been moved and seconded to continue to use Robert's rules of orders. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed? <laughs> Next item, set time for regular meetings. We have been second Monday at six o'clock. So moved. A second. It's been moved. Second. second. <laughs> been moved and second to set the time as the second Monday at six o'clock. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item number six, committees. I think you all got a copy of the committee list. In the agendas, the committees that we've had in the past, um, we do have negotiations this year. John and Tracy have been on that for a while. Um, we have to negotiate with GEGESA. Um, the rest of them, probably, I mean, that's going to be the most active probably for this year will be the financing negotiations. If everybody is fine with those, we yeah. can keep them the same. If anybody would like to switch, you can let us know. I'll make a motion to keep the committees the same. Second. It's been moved and seconded to keep the committee as previously. Are there any questions or discussions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item number seven, appoint the 2021 level one and level two investigators for 
physical and sexual abuse complaints? In the past, our building principals have been the level one with me as an alternative and our level two is the school attorney, local police and sheriff department. I would recommend to keep these the same. So moved. It's been moved and seconded to keep our abuse complaint structure the same. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item number eight, appoint member to the county conference board. And I think Darren did that after Aaron left. Correct. Darren, are you willing to do that again? Yeah, that's fine. So moved. So appoint Darren. Second. It's been moved and second to appoint Darren as our member of the county conference board. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item number nine, appoint our member to our foundation for the future board. Elaine has served in that position. Elaine, are you willing to continue with this? Sure, if you spell my name right. <laughs> that might be hard. <laughs> it's kind of so moved. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Second. second. It's been moved and second to appoint Elaine to be our member for our foundation for the future board. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item number 10, SBRC request for modified supplemental amounts for open enrollment out students not included in the district's previous year's certified enrollment count. This is when we have a new open enrolled student, we have to send the district that they go to the money. So this is to get the... Um, spending authority to do so. So I recommend that you do this. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded to approve the SBRC request. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item number 11, SBRC request for MSA for LEP instruction beyond five years. This is for ELL students or EL as they call them now, students that have not tested out of uh, services after five years of services. We have about 20 kids that do this. We do receive funding and they still are on the list. Um, the state only pays for the first five years after that. If they're still in the program, you still have to serve them. So this is how you get the money to serve them. So I would recommend that you approve this. So moved. So moved. Ben moved and second to approve the SBRC request as presented. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item number 12, new depository resolution. Lisa, this is you. Okay. Well, our, our annual meetings contain updating our resolution naming deposit goes along with our organizing. And there are no changes that I would be. I did take, um, I changed first bank, first bank to first. Page 12 is First that? national bank to first bank. Otherwise, first bank 
Why? I'm going to wake you up the same. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the depository list as presented. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Vote. Item number 13, affirmative action plan. We have to update our affirmative action plan every year. And Scott, if you'll go in on the basket on my shelf, the affirmative action plan is there. I forgot to bring it out. Um, really what you, what this, what you do with it is you update your staff on it. Um, our staff, we went from a female principal to a male principal at the elementary. So that switched a little bit. Um, we have a title IX meeting on Wednesday that Scott, Heidi, and myself will go to. I don't know if they'll give us new guidance because we're, we're supposed to be working with that. But at this time, this is our affirmative action plan and it has been updated for the year. So I'd recommend you approve that. If you'd like to read it, you may. A motion to approve. Second. second. It's been moved and second to approve the affirmative action plan. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item number 14, infrastructure items update. As you can see, when you walked in, we have the ceilings out of here. We did the asbestos abatement. Um, we lived in a bubble for about a week and a half. They would section off sections and come. The main thing was you had some joints and you had some stuff on the roof, but the main thing was this is a two by four tile. These are not asbestos. Anything that is a two by two tile is asbestos. So they had to go through and remove all of that. Um, that was in the hallways and both the upstairs and downstairs. That is complete. We've cleaned out the upstairs over the weekend. That's what the stuff was sitting out over here. Um, most of that stuff has sat in here ever since I've been here. Um, with that being said, then on Wednesday, they will bring in the demolition crew and they'll start tearing apart the upstairs. Um, Construction will start at that point. Probably will go until April or so, just depending on the way with COVID, not all the parts always come in, um, just with manufacturing delays. We had a delay with the asbestos, but that's okay because we have no plan to use it until next year. So um, Wednesday's the official start date and they'll start getting it then. Any questions? No action required, so we can move on to item number 15, purchases over 25,000. None at this time. That's good. So item number 16, uh, early retirement. Early retirement is something we look at every year. Past practice has been 16,000 cash for certified staff, 9,000 for non-certified, and that's prorated to their category and where they work. Um, what it allows us to do is if you offer it now, you can have it turned in our January meeting, we can approve it and it gives us an opportunity to hire. I would recommend that you approve it. It is getting harder and harder to hire all positions. And if you have somebody that isn't a hard to fill position, especially, and they take early retirement, it gives us more time to get the college grants coming out. My example would be math last year. We didn't offer it. We had a math teacher retire at the end of the year. We never filled it coming into the school year. It's just, it, 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 when you send out the contracts, you get it when the contracts come back and we still try to do it early, but from our st standpoint, the earlier, the better. Um, there is a list eligible. You also have the ability to put um, a number on it. You know, first come, first serve. Uh, how we've done it, and John, you tell me if I'm wrong on this, we've done it before where you say the first three people and then we'll evaluate them on an individual basis after that based on when they come in. Um, I, I'm fine with just offering it and, and let us know in January that in no I, I, I do not believe you need a limit. Um, I, I just, I need more to know who's leaving than I need to on a number so standpoint. So. Okay, got a manager. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve it for January or to offer it. I'll 
I'll second. It's been moved and second to approve offering early retirement as outlined uh, to be notified by January. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, sir, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item number 17, return to learn. Okay, a couple different things with that. One is the major one. We're looking to go back to normal school hours after Christmas break. We met as an administrative team. The busing is going well the way we like it, and we believe we can go back. What we did is we cut about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on what school you're off, off the middle school and the elementary, to allow for that second loop. That second loop is getting back, and we're getting the kids out of there at 3.30, so we believe we can go back to normal time. Why that is important is, one, it gives us that extra educational time. Two, if the state starts counting hours, you're losing an hour a week by having that 15 minutes short. If we get into that situation, we want every hour that we can have. Um, and so that's why I said, do you think we're to a point we can get it back? And we do believe we're to a point we can get it back. So this is more just informing you. But after Christmas break, we will go. Scott, you go to 315. Jared goes to about 310. And Heidi will stay 317, I believe. So that is our plan after Christmas break. Um, as you know, with virtual learning, we are putting the elementary on virtual learning starting Wednesday. We'll go Wednesday through Friday and evaluate. Scott, we got a meeting today to talk about it. Right now, the county numbers are rising. There's more and more schools going to the virtual option all the time. We can go five days virtual with five days in person like we do, because you got to stay that 50% match. If, without applying for a waiver, the waiver is set up to it's extremely difficult to get. Not only do you have to have 20% positivity rate, which we have, but you have to have over a 10% absentee rate. To get the 10% absentee rate, they throw out a bunch of groups that count at that. So if you're on quarantine for COVID because your parents have it in your home, you don't count. Um, if you are gone for reasons other than illness, you do not count. Right now, I think today, my middle school had the most kids gone and they still were only at 5.5% absent when you get to it. So we are a long ways from ever hitting that criteria. So really, the game we have to play is within the five days on, five days off. We discussed just because you're trying to keep your staff healthy and to keep them away from each other, if you have staff testing positive for spread, do we go district-wide? Scott brought up, and he was right, is Right now, we're not seeing it in my staff. If I go now and a week from now, my staff have it, I have to be back in school because we took the time off. So we've kind of taken our approach as we will look at the individual schools. When staff or student need dictate it, we will do that school, but we won't do it district-wide because he's right. If we would go five days, if we'd take everybody to virtual starting Wednesday and either the high school or the middle school, started seeing increases in staff or uh, positive or staff absences, we would have to have school because you still got to have those five days on, five days off. So that's kind of going to be the approach we take with it and the reason we're only doing elementary at this time. So does anybody have any questions on what we're doing COVID related or from a school standpoint? We, I have huge concerns of after Thanksgiving and after Christmas. There's about a month and a half period that I, I think you'll see a lot of mingling. Um, unfortunately, it's hit three weeks early too. You know, I, I thought it would be at that time and then we're hitting it now. We'll have to see what it's like at that time. From an activity standpoint, the state's telling us to play, we're gonna play um, until the state comes in and says we need to do something different. Any questions? So as long as one of the buildings is in operation, your five-day thing doesn't No, it's per building. It's per building. So yeah. that's why you're trying that's to why do you've got to do it. Building. Yes, because like right now, we could if the elementary is out five days, they could come back for five days and the high school can go out for five days. So But that know. doesn't buy the others like say that I mean it's just 
Yeah, it's no, your building. building. So every okay. kid has to be at least 50% in person. So that's why you're you're kind of breaking it up that way. And it's consecutive days, even though we've been, you know, the majority of the year good, those days don't count because they're not consecutive. No, it, it's got to be over a two-week period because that was one of my original questions is, so if we did five days now and it doesn't clear up, can you do five more with the anticipation that you're going to come back? five later. You can't because you have a two week period of no school. That is why schools are going to the hybrid option is every other day a kid is there and you've got the kids in school 50% of the time. We still have a hard time fitting that into our system of, of how you're going to do that and, and educate for the best of your ability. So have we, we had, have we had any issues with virtual assignments and I mean, any of that stuff? Yeah, your attendance is terrible when you do virtual. I mean, <laughs> but it, so has that not been the greatest? No, it, kids it, getting stuff in. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't heard anything. I, I had one teacher contact me today and say, please, this is high school, please, please, please do not make us go virtual. It's taken us this long to get back to, gotcha. to get back up. We okay, just, yeah, we, we just switched well. systems, uh, programs. We went to a, the one the elementary, we had genuity because we were having troubles with our program and when we were we were trying to do a lot of packet stuff and we couldn't keep track of what students were doing what um you know some kids wouldn't get things handed in so we just went to all online with the same program okay but you and i we're talking two different things here scott's talking virtual like if you're 100 percent virtual right i'm talking virtual learning when we shut down for five days gotcha um I, i've had staff at the well, high it's school, kind of like your thing. kids that are in quarantine that are supposed to be kind of attending right. from home. Yeah, right. Yeah. The, the, the attendance is not very good that way, and and uh, the getting the assignments is it's not good. Gotcha. And we even had like the buildings open so kids could get internet access. We had two show up that week at the high school anyway. But the elementary, our best um, attendance day during our last virtual stint was about 85, 84 percent, something like that. So. Um, we had one one fourth grade class at 100% the whole week, and then you have some others that are, you know, 60-ish. Right. So I, I think it, it kind of depends on every individual family situation. We know it's not ideal, but we it's not ideal to have 30% of the right. set. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just was curious. Yeah. I will give Jared and our elementary teachers credit. They've held the ship together probably three to four days longer than, than should have been possible they're covering all over the place today we had to move our meeting because jared was teaching music so um it he, he all along he said i think we can do it i think we but i called him today and i said when does it break he said i think we just broke so it, uh, yeah. it, it, they're doing everything they can and our staff has been wonderful they're doing everything they can but when you're getting that number of people gone it's just hard to, right. to keep it going yeah. we still will offer lunch we will do hot lunch for middle school and high school, elementary will be able to pick up sack lunches like they did before um, for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Buses will still run because um, you'll have high school kids and middle school kids that will ride them. We'll still also pick up a bus at the daycare because they don't they have too many kids for the internet that they have and we'll try to park some buses around town in the places we know have need. So and the elementary school will be open for kids that need internet. Did you get a lot the last time at the elementary? Not really. When we talked about that? Um, towards the end of the week, we got more. Uh, started out, we'd have maybe four in the morning, four in the afternoon. And then um, towards the end of the week, I think we built up to maybe 12 in the morning, 10 in the afternoon, depending. Um, we will be shifting some grade. So we had fourth, third and fourth grade that were in the afternoon last the last time and we're going to have everybody go in the morning just well for a couple reasons um with conferences we, we wouldn't be able to go on thursday in the afternoon because of conferences and then just to try to keep this these three days consistent we're just all going to go in the morning um and then it, it might help with some scheduling things too just on the that we're missing so many staff members so Any other questions? No action needed. Report. Next item: board member reports.
I got nothing. Quiet bunch. Great. Superintendent's report. I only have one thing that we haven't covered. Um, we always have a youth wrestling tournament this weekend. I talked to the organizers with that today. We are going to postpone that. They are going to hold it January 31st with the numbers that are growing. We just have a concern about bringing a large number of parents and kids into our school um, with where we are. January 31st is a Sunday. That is, and Jared can talk on that, that is when a lot of the youth tournaments are held. We traditionally do not hold stuff on a Sunday in our school, but it's the only date that's available to, to come back with it. The theory kind of is a lot of your high school coaches and people involved with the program, their wrestling tournaments on Saturday and Sunday is when they can go spend time with their kids and some of those things. So this will be a Sunday. There's not a lot we can do about it if we want to try to have it. Um, then we will get it back onto a Saturday and go back to normal after this year if everything else gets back to a normal. But um, I, I, I think it's a good call not to have it at this point. Um, this, the, the numbers are growing too fast right now. So that's all I have. Does anybody have any questions for me? Are you doing the uh, drill team showcase thing? Was that this Sunday? Drill team is competing next week. Yeah, okay. weren't they doing something? I don't. They do do a Sunday showcase. I showcase. don't know. I that was later. I, 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 mean, I think I, that's second some. No, I thought, because the mom that complained to me, that was part of the thing. Well, it, was, it wasn't a bit Because they couldn't, Sunday. they were going to have wrestling on Saturday, but they couldn't do something with their showcase with We have not limited any activities. And I've talked to, the drill team was one of those saying, that if the kids can stay healthy, they can go compete because... Right now, from a statewide level, they're telling us to have the sports and to have that, and we're going to do what everybody else does. Um, we will have wrestling. We'll send our kids to wrestling tournaments. Um, so with the we had the play. Yeah, you know, I was and, thinking and it would be. It my was... theory with the play is how can we spread them out? How can we make it as safe as possible? Because if that might be your only music performance you're going to have for a year, because we're not really going to do concerts where we're going to set people in there. So, um, yeah, I was under the impression they'd perform like on Sunday and the public was able to go watch them in the gym. That's what I was gathering. So, was we might have to check it last that. year, but I thought that was in the winter more. Yeah, but I I think this is what the mom was getting at is it, it was, was next, like their next weekend, I think. it was their practice. Or anyway, I, I, as long as they have a way to do it safely, I don't have a problem. Your problem with wrestling wasn't. It, with the youth wrestling tournaments, the number of people that come, you know, for a dance team, you don't get 300 people because, you know, I mean, you've got to live in a number of kids. Um, with the wrestling, you, you can have 100 kids that show up, and now they're bringing two to three people a person. So, any other questions? Hearing none, all those are favorite in motion. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Adjourned.